Welcome back. Today we're gonna almost finalize our little Hugo blog down project by pulling everything that we had in GitHub to a Netlify uh, deployable site. So basically, as you commit messages from our studio to GitHub and you push that code there, Netlify will automatically monitor that public folder and as it changes, it'll update your website. Today we're gonna do that, so stay tuned. This is my main website. It's where I teach how to create content online, make money, mostly for teaching people, uh, just like this channel here. So if you wanna check out how to create these videos, check out that site, markjengrass.com. All right, so let's get started. We have a project open, and if you followed along from the previous tutorials, you should be at the same steps. Um, I have multiple playlists on this channel, so some of them are merged together. Like for example, the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Learning R um, has a mixture of multiple playlists in it. Um, if you want something very specific, uh, check out all the different playlists I have um, for particular interests. That being said, this is episode five of the Blog Down Hugo site, I believe, and what I want to show you is a couple of things. Let's start off with making sure that you did commit the right code to GitHub. And again, you need to have a GitHub account and you've had to have done the previous tutorial to follow along. So here we go. Um, the first thing I wanna show you is, let's look at our files real quick. So I'm gonna look at files. I will jump out of the way. So under files, um, I, you see that I do have a public folder here, right? If you don't, that means you didn't build your site correctly. Um, I'm not sure how we built in the last tutorial, but what you want to do, because the site's already set up, you want to do blog down, colon, colon, build site. I don't think you need to do the Hugo build. I believe it's just plain build site. So let's just do that. When you build the site, that actually creates the public folders. It gives you a synopsis right here. Uh, how many pages were built, how many static files, how many processed images, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but you're only concerned about the public folder. Now, remember, when I said to commit, we can go to git here. I'm always, oh, let's save it, control S. Let's see if that does the trick. So what, what'll show in git is anything that's actually had a change to it. I literally just built this a few minutes ago, so nothing's really changed on my end and that's the problem that you have. Uh, that's why they're not showing up here. So if you make a change to something, it'll show up. If you make a change um, to something that's in GitHub, <laughs> so to speak, you should have a bunch of public folders there. So in order to add those to the staging area, you can do uh, tools, shell, and remember we would do git add dash, uh, just plain public, because we want only the public folder, forward slash, and I put star there. I'm not sure if that's really necessary or not, but git space add space public forward slash star. Now, of course, I don't have anything here, but you should or you've already committed to GitHub. So this will catch you up. If you didn't, you would click the commit button and give it a, a, a name. We'll make more reasonable names so there's no changes. I didn't make any changes, but then you'd click on push. Everything's up to date, cool. Oh, one thing to know is when you first start a project, when you first wake up in the morning, after you've done all your commits and pushes, the first thing you want to do is hit this little down arrow is pull. Pull from your GitHub. So if you're on a MacBook or a PC and you switch to one or the other the next day and you want to resume where you left off, you would open this up, your little um, project, and pull from the GitHub. So you do the pull so you get the latest version. That's just a little extra uh, narrative for you. All right, so we know that everything is on, let's see, GitHub. That's easy part, right? Everything's easy. So we go to github.com. You could see that we have multiple projects. Mine's on the left-hand side. You might have to fiddle around and find where yours is, but we have project one here. And um, I accidentally added everything to it, but you literally only needed to do your public. So under this public folder is where we're gonna be focused on. And if you scroll down, you'll see you have an index.html. That's gonna be key for having uh, Netlify uh, find it. Okay, so simple as that. Now let's go to Netlify. I, if you haven't created a free account, do those proper steps. So uh, sign up, use your Google or your Git, uh, GitHub account to sign up, etc, etc. I'm already signed up, so I'll just log in. If you haven't signed up, please do so, pause this video, and then come right back to it. 
Now this is very simple. New site from Git. Click on that. Continuous deployment. That's what we're going to be doing. Continuous deployment. Uh, you've heard of maybe the term continuous integration, continuous deployment, CI slash CD. You'll see that everywhere. So now you can say to your potential employer, uh, yes, I've done continuous integration, continuous deployment, because this is what that is. We're going to do it from GitHub. I'll show you anyways how that how that is true. Okay, so from GitHub, it automatically, um, I'm already connected to my GitHub. It'll probably give you a couple steps to connect to your GitHub, maybe ask you for a permission or something like that. Select yes, then it'll automatically know all of your GitHub projects. So allow Netlify to access GitHub. Now, the project that I've created was the project one, remember? So I have mine right here. Let's click on that, it's simple. So it automatically pulls in my owner, I'm the owner, branch to, you know, keep all these probably the same. Build command. This is important. I don't know if it knows this or if I put this in previously, somehow it, it knows it, but make sure you have build command is lowercase Hugo and publish directory is public and it's case sensitive. So lowercase H and lowercase P because you've created a public folder. You could have called it something else, you know, through blog down, build in with extra parameters. You could have said, hey, I don't want to publish in public. But make sure because we're building this is a command. Netlify is going to go to our public site on GitHub and it's going to know it's a Hugo site because we're giving it a command. It's basically on Netlify's side using the command line saying, hey, how do I build this website? We're telling it how to do that now. Now, you might have an advanced uh, checkbox here. Click on show advanced. Ah, okay, this is cool. Define environment variables. This is exactly what you need. You need a new variable here. And it says variable name and value. What are we going to put there? Let me tell you. We are going to put in the word Hugo underscore version, all capital, all capital, Hugo underscore version. <laughs> and it, everything is case sensitive. And what value are we going to put there? Well, let's go back to R real quick. Let's do blog down, colon, colon, Hugo underscore version and figure out a, the exact version that you need, which you need everything here. 0.72.0 is the version that I have. Yours might be slightly different. Copy all three of those um, values with the periods. So 0.72.0, let's go back to Netlify somewhere and type in 0 0.0, wait, 0. 72.0 and you need that lead in zero because it's got what it's going to do it's going to actually go to uh, particular websites um, using that value as a parameter and it'll be within the URL as a um, I forget what you call it but that zero matters so 0 0.72.0 now click on deploy site and what you'll see hopefully um, it might not show you a whole lot right here but mine says uh, in queued so give it a few seconds a few minutes um, you can hit the refresh button here if you'd like, which I usually do. And you see it's building. You can actually click on it. When you click on it and you scroll down, you'll see what it's doing. So if you clicked on it uh, a little bit earlier, you would have seen these populate right here. And if you got an error, it would show you an error. And that's important to find because a lot of people probably will have an error the first couple times. They might have put a wrong uh, version in there or something like that. But remember that URL I was talking about, um, it actually goes out somewhere and uses that 0.72, ah, right here. Hugo static site generator, version 0 0.72. It, it just, it needs to be exact. That's all there is to it. But it looks like everything ran just fine, right? Build completed, finish process and build, 32 milliseconds, whatever it took. Now, where is this site at? Well, we can click on preview. That's where the site is. This is the site and it works. All of this works. Posts, all of my posts work, and it's all under a Netlify site. Now you can customize your Netlify um, URL a little bit, I believe. We're not gonna get into that yet. So that's that. You've got a live site that anybody can go to. You can share that URL that's up there. Uh, it's not very user friendly yet though. So in the next tutorial, I wanna show you how to customize that, that URL just a little bit for free and how to add posts. If you guys like this tutorial, please share it, save it, show me your websites, uh, post your links inside of the comments, whatever you want to do. I'd like to see what you've come up with, what themes you chose. Uh, we're getting close. We're getting close. So a few more steps and we'll be, we'll be on our way.